Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze a property cantilever beam. This beam is having the span of L and it is subjected to a point load W in the center. First we are going to find the expressions for the fixed end movement at A and for the vertical reactions. Then we are going to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. We are going to derive the expressions for the deflection in the center and the maximum deflection at its location. Finally, we are going to derive the expressions for the slope in the center and in the propped end. First, we are going to find the prop reaction RB. For that, we are going to use consistent deformation method. In that method, first we have to find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and movements are 3. They are the movement MA, the vertical reactions RA and RB. The available equilibrium equations are 2. They are sigma m is equal to 0 and sigma v is equal to 0. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 3 minus 2. We will get 1. So from these 3, we have to release any one. Let us release Rb so that this statically indeterminate beam will become statically determinate beam. Here you can see that in the point B, I have released Rb. Previously, we had a propped cantilever beam. But now, it is a cantilever beam. Now, let us see the formula to find Rb. P delta matrix is equal to delta matrix minus delta L matrix. P is the final reaction or movement. Delta is the displacement due to unit load or unit movement in the released point. Delta is the final displacement. Delta L is the displacement due to the loads. In this formula, we can take delta on the other side. So it will come in the denominator. We know that in this problem, P is RB. So instead of P, we can apply RB. Delta is the final displacement. In the point B, there is no settlement or sinking. So delta will be 0. Finally, we are getting this Rb is minus delta L upon delta. In this analysis, we have to find the reaction Rb. When we find the reactions, the displacements or the deflections, suppose we have to find the movements, the displacement will be slope. But now we have to find the reaction. So delta L and delta will be the deflections. In this formula, first let us find delta L. We know that delta L is the displacement due to the load. We know that in the cantilever beam, when it is subjected to a point load W in the center, the formula for the deflection in the free end is phi WL cube upon 48 EI. Since this is a downward deflection, we have to apply that as negative. Now let us find the displacement due to unit load that is delta. In the point B, in the direction of RB, we have to apply unit load. RB was acting upwards, so the unit load also should be applied upwards. We know that in the cantilever beam, when the beam is subjected to W in the free end, the deflection formula in the free end is WL cube upon 3 EI. But here the load is acting upwards, so the deflection will be occurring upwards. We just saw the formula WL cube upon 3 EI. Here the W is 1, so for a W we can apply 1. Finally, we will get L cube upon 3 EI. Since it is a upward deflection, delta will be positive. In this formula, we have found both of them. Let us apply them. Negative into negative, it will become positive. We can take this term inversely and then multiply. We can eliminate L cube and EI. 
3 upon 48 is 16. So finally for RB, we are getting 5W upon 16. Now let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 and find RA. RA and RB are acting upwards. So both of them are positive. W is acting downwards. So it is negative. For these two terms, we can take LCM. 16 into W, we will get 16W. Finally, for RA, we will get 11W upon 16. Now, let us apply the rule sigma m is equal to 0 and find ma. To find ma, I am going to take movement a put a. In this case, I am moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anti clockwise will be positive. RB is acting in the anti clockwise direction. So it is positive and the distance is L. The load W is acting in the clockwise direction. So it is negative and the distance is L upon 2. Let us assume that MA is acting in the anti clockwise direction. So it is positive. For these two terms, we can take LCM. Let us keep 16 as LCM. Finally, for MA, we are getting a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Now, we are going to draw the shear force diagram. Before making the shear force diagram, let us find the shear force values. Up to shear force at just left of C. Let us use the right hand side rule. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Up to at just right of C. From the point B, let us use left hand side rule. Upwards will be negative and downwards will be positive. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to make the bending moment diagram. Before making the bending moment diagram, let us find the bending moment values. The point B is a simply supported end. So the bending moment at B is 0. Let us find the bending moment in the point A. For that we can apply the right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that will be negative. We can find the movement in the point C either from the point A or from the point B. But it is easy when we calculate from the point B. In this case, we are following left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Or B is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So that will be positive and the distance is L upon 2. Finally, for the bending moment at C, we are getting 5WL upon 32. Here you can see the bending moment diagram. In this point, the bending moment becomes 0. In this point, let us make a section at a distance of x. We know that in this point, the movement is 0. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that will be negative. RA is acting in the clockwise direction, so that will be positive and the distance is x. Finally, for x, we are getting 3L upon 11. If you wanted to calculate the distance of point of contraflexure from the right side, we have to subtract 3L upon 11 by L. When we do that, we are getting 8L upon 11. In this beam, in the point A, there is a fixed support. So, in the point A, slope and deflection will be 0. In the point B, we have a vertical support. So, in this point, there will be no deflection, but there will be slope. Now, we are going to find the slope in the point B, the slope and deflection in the center C. For that, we are going to use Macaulay's method. We have to make sections. In this beam, there are two different parts, AC and CB. So, we have to make two sections, one section in AC and one section in CB. 
you can see that I have made two sections. The first section at a distance of x from the point B. The second section also at a distance of x from the point B. Now let us find the moment in the sections. We are going to find the moment from the point B. In this case, we are moving towards the left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. This reaction is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is x. So 5w upon 16 into x. The load w is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be negative. For this load, we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus l by 2. This equation should be separated by the dotted line. Up to the distance l by 2, we have to only consider this term. If we go beyond the distance l by 2, we have to consider both of these terms. We know that the moment mxx is equal to ea d square y upon dx square. Now let us integrate on both of the sides. For integrating x, we can use this formula. And for integrating x minus l upon 2, we can use this formula. When we integrate d square y upon dx square, we will get dy upon dx. When we integrate x, we will get x square upon 2. And when we integrate x minus l by 2, we will get x minus l by 2 the whole square by 2. C1 is the constant. 16 into 2, we will get 32. Let us integrate this equation on both of the sides. When we integrate dy upon dx, we will get y. When we integrate x square, we will get x cube upon 3. When we integrate x minus l by 2 the whole square, we will get x minus l by 2 the whole power 3 by 3. 2 into 3, we will get 6. When we integrate c1, we will get c1x. c2 is the new constant. 32 into 3, we will get 96. In this beam, in the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. We know that dy upon dx is the slope. So when x is equal to L, dy upon dx will be 0. In this equation, let us apply x is equal to L and dy upon dx is 0. When we do that, we will get C1 which is equal to minus WL square upon 32. In the point B, there is a vertical support. So there will be no deflection. So we can make a condition when x is equal to 0, y also will be 0. In this equation, let us apply x is 0 and y is 0. When we apply, we have to be very careful. We should not take this term because this term is only applicable beyond the point C. But we are applying this condition in the point B. So we should not consider this. When we apply this, here we will get C2 which is 0. In the EI dy upon dx equation, let us apply the value of C1. This equation is the slope equation. Let us keep this equation as number 1. In the EI y equation, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. When we apply, we will get this. This is the deflection equation. Let us keep this equation as number 2. Now let us take the first equation and find the slope in the property end and in the center. First let us find the slope in the center. We know that in the center the value of x is L upon 2. So instead of x we have to apply L upon 2. No need to consider this term. We know that this term is only applicable beyond the point C. For x, I have applied L upon 2. L upon 2, the whole square, we will get L square upon 4. 32 into 4, we will get 128. Then, using the calculator, we can get this value. 
we know that dy upon dx is the slope since we are finding the slope in the point c we can denote that as theta c finally for theta c we are getting wl square upon 128 ei now let us find the slope in the property end we know that in the point b x is 0 so here we have to apply x is equal to 0 when we do that we are getting theta b which is minus wl square upon 32 ei now let us take the deflection equation and find the deflection in the center we know that in the center x is l upon 2 so instead of x we have to apply l upon 2 no need to consider this term l upon 2 the whole cube we will get l cube upon 8 when we multiply these two we will get 768 then we can take a calculator and then subtract 1 upon 64 by 5 by 768 we will get minus 7 upon 768 we can take ea on the other side it will come in the denominator for the deflection in the center we have got a negative value that means it is a downward deflection now we are going to find the maximum deflection when the slope is zero there will be the maximum deflection let us take the slope equation and then equate that to zero the maximum deflection occurs between c and b so no need to consider this term we can take this term on the right side so it will become positive we can eliminate 32 and w then we can take 5 on the other side so it will come in the denominator we can take square root on both of the sides finally for x we will get l upon root 5 so this is the location where the maximum deflection occurs now let us take the deflection equation and instead of x let us apply l upon root 5 so that we will get the maximum deflection here also we should not consider this term finally for the maximum deflection we will get a negative value that means it is downward deflection now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video